Hey everybody, let's take a quick look at Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania, directed by Peyton Reed and starring Paul Rudd, Michelle Pfeiffer, and Jonathan Majors. Scott Lang's daughter Cassie, played this time by Catherine Newton, has invented a device that can map out the quantum realm by sending signals down to it. This causes Janet Van Dyne to panic, and it turns out rightly so, as the device ends up pulling both Ant-Men, both Wasps, and Cassie into the quantum realm. They find an entire civilization living right under their own, with a war going on between a resistance movement and the current ruler, Kang the Conqueror. This is the latest entry in the MCU, and indeed the first entry in Phase 5, and Phase 5 is not off to a good start, according to the critics, and I'm a little surprised by that because I didn't think this was anywhere near as bad as they made it sound. It's not perfect, it certainly has some issues, but I still had fun with it. It has a good sense of humor, although the execution there was maybe a bit off at times. James Gunn really set the standard for blending comedy, drama, and action in a comic book movie, and it seems like Peyton Reed is kinda trying to be James Gunn, but he's not quite there. The end result isn't bad, just a little messy. The action sequences are a lot of fun though, especially near the end when Hank gets to unleash a horde of giant ants. That was pretty cool. And we get to see Cassie Lang's beginnings as a superhero, and possibly another building block for the Young Avengers, we'll see. And this certainly isn't Catherine Newton's fault, but it is a little shitty how Marvel handled the recast, especially since they didn't even tell Emma Furman that they were doing it, and she found out the same time as everyone else. Reed clearly had different ideas for what to do with this character, but it is a little bizarre that they were willing to recast Cassie, but they're still holding on to Evangeline Lilly as the Wasp, after all the shit she's been through. If any member of this cast is not going to be missed, probably her. Paul Rudd is still his usual charming self, and I really dug the relationship with him and Cassie and how he's trying to coach her to be a proper ant person. When you're doing the enlarging strike thing, you got to get the timing right. It's very important. Of course, in the last movie, Michael Douglas was just going through the motions, and it showed. This time, he seems to give a little bit more of a shit, but it does seem like he's ready to be done with this franchise. I believe he said in an interview that he would come back for a fourth movie if Hank Pym was killed off, so there you go. And this is really Michelle Pfeiffer's chance to shine. We get a lot of Janet's backstory and how she spent 30 years in the quantum realm and the friends and enemies she made along the way. Janet has been through a lot, and it was cool to finally see some of that. And of course, we have Marvel's new big bad, Kang, or at least new to the big screen. Technically, we did see him in Loki, or at least a version of him. And I thought Majors was very good in this role. Kang is a formidable bastard. I don't know that we really got to see the full extent of his power, because by the time Ant-Man and company end up in the quantum realm, he's already taken over. But it's still very clear that the Resistance movement is outmatched. And we have the MCU debut of MODOK, and I don't know if I want to say too much about him because there are spoilers involved, but what they did with that character was interesting. And a bit silly. I was a bit disappointed that they got Bill Murray for this movie as a Quantum Realm governor of sorts and didn't give him all that much to do. Likewise for William Jackson Harper, who is playing what appears to be a very easily annoyed mind reader. Which is understandable. If you could read everyone's thoughts all the time, I imagine it would get old pretty quick. But yeah, I wanted more from him. Didn't get it. And Quantum Mania reminds me a lot of Star Wars in good and bad ways. We got a bunch of rebels fighting an evil empire with a powerful, imposing authority figure. I have heard this song before. There's a whole bunch of really weird and very creatively designed alien creatures running around. And we even got a cantina sequence of sorts. And the computer-generated effects remind me a bit of the Star Wars prequel trilogy, and not in a good way. I don't know if the VFX team just wasn't given enough time or resources, given how movie studios tend to treat VFX teams, that's entirely possible, but yeah, it... it needed another pass. Obviously, there is a lot of green screen work in this movie, and a good chunk of it looks pretty poor by today's standards. They didn't just go into the quantum realm, they somehow went back in time 20 years. There's one shot in particular that sticks out in my mind where Janet puts her hand out to touch this huge friggin' alien creature that is clearly not there, and oh, no, no, that did not work. Again, probably not entirely the fault of the VFX house that worked on this movie. I'm quite willing to blame the House of Mouse on this one. So overall, probably not the start to Phase 5 that Marvel was hoping for. It's certainly not their best work, but I still enjoyed it. 
And if the MCU is your thing, you will probably enjoy it as well. Though I don't know if I'd quite recommend a full price ticket. This may be better as a matinee. And make sure you stick around for the mid-credits and post-credits scenes. That's all I have to say about Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. Till next time, take care.